Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical. Red dots on handguns are the future. Whether you want to admit it or not, whether you've been really good with iron sights for your whole life or not, once you get some experience with having a red dot on your pistol, it's hard to deny that they are better. But the one big problem that I keep hearing from people is that when they first put a red dot on their first red dot gun, that they have trouble finding the dot in the window. Whereas when you've been training your whole life with iron sights, you look for that front sight, get your sight picture, take your shot. And so part of the whole point of red dots is to speed up your shooting, speed up your target acquisition. But for a lot of people, it actually slows them down at first and that discourages them. Well, I'm gonna tell you how I got faster with red dots as soon as I put the, my first one on a pistol. And it's a fairly simple thing, doesn't take a lot of time, pretty easy. Before we get started, remember to like, share, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Do you run red dots? Do you run iron sights? And how do you train? Let's get started. So this is my Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0. And I've got a Holosun 407K mounted on it. And I absolutely love this gun. And this red dot makes me more effective with it. And before I put this on here, I did a lot of reading. And the biggest number one thing I kept hearing from people is that when you first put a red dot on your first handgun, then it's going to slow you down for a while. And not to get discouraged by that, all it takes is training and practice, right? Well... I'm gonna tell you how you can speed up that training and practice and get proficient with it much quicker. And I'm gonna tell you what I did. And what I did was dry fire practice. Now, I'm sure you've heard of dry fire practice. I'm sure most of you do dry fire practice. Dry fire practice is an important part of training and of gun ownership. But I found it especially useful and especially effective when it came to getting used to a red dot on my pistol. Now, when it comes to a red dot on a carbine, that is a quicker thing to get good at because you have all the different points of contact. You pull up your AR or whatever it is, and by shouldering it, that red dot aligns with your eye pretty much the same every single time. And so it's quick right off the bat. Well, with a pistol, you don't have that same all those points of contact and so you have to train yourself to present it the same way each and every time and what i've found the easiest way to do that is by dry fire practice because even if you're like me and you spend a lot of time at the range i go shooting every single weekend part of that is because i have this youtube channel that i'm maintaining and i'm trying to bring you guys new content every week so i go out and i put rounds down range every week and I've got steel targets that I set up so I know when I make hits because I hear a ping and that has helped me out immensely just in itself. But there's only so much live fire training you can do. Dry fire practice can take a very minimal amount of time each day. But as long as you're consistent and you do it all the time, you will get good very quickly or at least you'll get a lot better than you are. So I remember when I first got the red dot on this pistol and I was concerned about being able to find the dot in the window quickly especially I chose a dot with a fairly small window this is a Holosun 407k the K is their smaller footprint optics made for concealed carry guns now I chose it for this M&P 2.0 because it has a shorter footprint uh, the base isn't as tall so I could co-witness my factory iron sights through it without having to get suppressor height sights. I was building this gun out and I had a certain budget and suppressor height sights were not in that budget. And so I got a dot that would co-witness with these sights. But because of that, I got a dot with a smaller window. So I was all that more concerned about being able to find the dot in the window. Now, very quickly, that concern left me. And the reason why is because I dry fire practiced at home a lot. And it really only takes a few minutes a day. So 
I already dry fire practice before I got this, mainly with my concealed carry gun, because that's the one that I'm most likely to have to use in a defensive situation. And so what I would do is each day, when I would take this and put this gun on, I would draw a couple times, make sure that I could defeat my garment, make sure that I got my sight picture, put it away. Do that a few times, put it away, and on with my day. And then at the end of the night, I would come home and do the same a few times, and then take the holster out of my belt and put my gun away. And that helped me get good at drawing my concealed carry pistol, getting a sight picture. And generally what I do, and what everyone should do, make sure that there is no ammunition nearby when you're gonna do dry fire practice. Because I like to dry fire with actual trigger pulls. And so when I do, I will have my striker cocked, pull, present, get my sight picture, prep my trigger as I'm coming up, and click my trigger and make sure that my sights don't move. And I have a thermostat on the wall in my bedroom that I use. That's what I point at. Sometimes if I'm really getting into it, I'll use a few different things. Thermostat, light switch, something on my wall over here, lamp over here, move around, try a lot of different things. Um, and it just helps get that sight picture. And I like to use something on my wall that's small so that I'm making sure that I'm getting a, a precise sight picture. And as long as you draw, present, prep your trigger, and then when you pull the trigger, your sights don't move, well, then you know that you got an effective shot off, basically. Now with iron sights, that's pretty simple. With a red dot, you can really see that movement of your trigger, which in my opinion makes that dry fire practice all that much more effective because you can really tell if you're pulling your shot off. So I like to do this out of the holster, but not always. Sometimes you only feel like you've got a couple of minutes in the day. And so I'll pull it. I've got a little bedside quick access safe. I'll pull it out, present the pistol, prep the trigger, and I present the same way every single time. And what you'll find if you do it the same every single time, as you're prepping your trigger, your sights are coming out. What I found helped me at first is I would try to focus on that front sight, just like I normally would with iron sights. And as I'm coming out, that front sight falls in between my rear sights and that dot falls from the top of the middle of the top of the window, right into my sight picture, put it on my target, squeeze the trigger. Make sure you squeeze the trigger straight back to the rear. And as long as that dot doesn't move or moves very, very minimally, you got a good shot off. And you can see by the direction that dot moves if you are pulling your shot in either direction and you can adjust for that. So really having a red dot on your pistol helps your dry fire training because you can really see your mistakes a lot more than you can with iron sights in my opinion. Prep the trigger, pull the trigger. And yep, like that one, I pull it a little low and left, which is a standard thing that people do. Now it does help to have this apex trigger. Really a light crisp trigger makes it that much easier to be accurate. And it really does with this. I, I'm very effective with this M&P. And having the red dot has made me that much more effective. And so I don't want people to be afraid of putting a red dot on their pistol. There is definitely more of a cost associated with it. You can't get around that early, but don't be afraid of what people say when they say that it's going to make you slower because I have seen people looking for the dot, moving their pistol around, trying to find it. But if you start by focusing on your front sight, just like you would normally and getting that sight picture, as long as your red dot is zeroed properly, that dot will drop right into the middle of your window and you'll find your sight picture. And after a while, it's automatic. You don't have to look for your front sights anymore, which is good because the whole point of running a dot on your pistol is to not have to look at those three different planes, your front sight, your rear sight, your target, is to be threat focused. So you just look at the threat and when you present, your dot just magically appears on top of your target. You can engage, pull the trigger, 
and get an accurate shot off. And the more you practice, the easier that'll get. To where now, every time I present, my dot lands right on the target that I'm looking at, right as my trigger is prepped, and it's easy to get that shot off quickly and accurately, and that transfers to the range. When I get to the range, even if I haven't shot this pistol in a while, because I've got a lot of different guns, I'm filming a lot of different videos every week, and so there's only so much that I could shoot each gun. I can't go shoot all of these every week. But if I practice this enough at home, then every time I pick this pistol up, I have no problem with it. And the dot falls right on the target. Earlier this week, I did a review of this. This is the Kimber um, Super Jaeger. It comes with a Delta Point Pro and no iron sights. But I didn't have any problem running this gun because I already do enough dry fire practice with a red dot on my other pistol at home that it was just that natural to me. And that's the important thing. If you dry fire practice enough, it will become more natural than iron sights. And honestly it is. At this point, I've found it easier to shoot my dot pistol faster and more accurate than my iron sight pistols. And so that's why I say that red dots are the future. As long as you dry fire practice, you will get very fast with them and you'll get faster quicker, if that makes any sense, because it's something you can really just practice with a couple minutes at home each day and, and get very good very quick to where it just becomes natural. Now, I don't think that you should only dry fire with your go-to pistol. Like I said, I do it all the time with my uh, P365, my concealed carry gun. And I do that one from the holster almost every time, which is easy because I'm using that pistol in a holster every day. So I have opportunities to do that without having to pull out extra equipment or anything. I find it important to do it with a 1911 too, because you know, different manual of arms. So with a 1911, you've got a manual safety that you have to defeat. And you've also got a grip safety. And so it's very important to have your safety on, come up, pull your safety off while you're getting your sight picture. And then that way you're gonna be natural with your 1911. And this goes for any platform. Any different platform that you run, you should dry fire with so that you become natural and you don't even have to think about it. So that if and when you ever have to use your firearm in any kind of defensive scenario, that you fall back on your training and that it's just automatic and not something you have to think about. What I like to do with a carbine, is generally I'll use no magazine in it. That way I can rack it without it locking back each time. But pull it up while I pull the safety off and click the trigger. Safety back on, safety off, trigger. And you can see again, because of your reticle, whether your shots are pulled off or not. Now generally most people are gonna be better with a carbine than with a pistol. And so that's why I focus more on the pistol in this video, because a red dot on a carbine, <laughs> it's automatically gonna make you a better shooter than iron sights. Red dot on a pistol, might make you feel like a worse shooter at first, but as long as you do the practice, you'll get better and you'll get better very quickly. I really do think that dry fire practice is important. I'm not gonna go into every single detail of how I dry fire practice. Figure, figure out a regimen that works for you, a time that works for you, and what you feel like you need to focus on and focus on that. And once you get very proficient at whatever that may be, as you do live fire, you know, range trips, as you drive fire, you're going to find other things that maybe you're not as proficient about and then practice those things until those become automatic for you. And it's just um, a very real way to become a better shooter without spending zillions of dollars on ammunition and all your free time at the range. Now, I am all for spending a lot of money on ammunition and spending free time at the range. In fact, it's what I do and I really enjoy it. But 
I don't care who you are, there's only so much range time you can get. And while it may not be nearly as exciting as shooting live rounds, it is at least as important, in my opinion, for getting better, you know, for getting your skills better, for becoming more proficient with your firearm. I think dry fire practice is extremely important. And you can even do it in the dark, practice with your weapon mounted light. You can practice every single aspect of whatever kind of shooting that you do or that you think that you may need to do someday. You can practice it at home as long as you make sure there's no ammunition in your gun or anywhere near you because negligent discharges do happen. And it's very important that when you're doing this, that what you aim at, you know what's behind that wall, that you're not shooting into one of your kids' rooms or your neighbor's house or anything. Even if you're 100% sure that your gun is unloaded, double, triple, quadruple check it. No rounds in the magazine, no magazine in the gun, nothing in the chamber. Triple, quadruple check that. Don't have rounds anywhere near you. Don't have a loaded magazine near you that you might automatically pick up and chamber around without thinking about it. And then all of a sudden you blew a hole in your wall and the police are on their way and your guns are getting confiscated and your little bit of practice at the end of the day turned into a really bad day. So be responsible, practice the four rules of gun safety, know what's behind your target, treat your gun as if it's loaded. I know that, you know, to an extent, pulling the trigger, pointing at the wall, you're kind of not treating it as if it's loaded, but make sure that you know it's unloaded. All of those things you have to pay attention to. Don't point it at anything you're not willing to destroy, even if you're sure that it's unloaded. You know, I don't point this toward my daughter's bedroom, even when I know it's unloaded. Because it's when people think that their gun is unloaded that something horrible happens. Um, that's everybody that's ever had a negligent discharge they always say, I, I was 100% sure my gun wasn't loaded. Well, it was. And one thing a lot of people do, they'll keep the magazine in it, rack it, expel around, and then drop the magazine. Well, what they did, they ejected one round, but they chambered another one. So if you don't eject the magazine first and then rack out your chambered round, you didn't actually unload your gun. And a lot of people do this. So pay attention to what you're doing. Be very deliberate with all your movements, with all your manipulations of your firearm, and just be safe and enjoy your dry fire practice. You know, it's just more time you get to spend with your gun when you're not at the range, right? And I enjoy that. So anyway, if you like this video, if you found it, you know, entertaining or educational at all, please like and share it. Please subscribe to Sawtooth Tactical and, um, Please check out my Patreon down below. I uh, could definitely use the funds to help add more things, make more cool videos for you guys, pay for ammo, so that we have more live fire range videos, all that. And uh, from Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.